Okay, welcome back. So in the previous video, we went through and built up our topography using spot elevations here. Um, now that's certainly one method and when that's all you really have in terms of uh, available information, then that works just fine. But I did want to demonstrate real quickly how we can also create elevations and topography by actually building up some contour lines. So um, just over here off the side, I'm just going to kind of create a rectangle here and we'll show you two different methods for how we can uh, set up these topography lines. The first being with our polyline tool. Um, and I just want to make a quick note here that I'm actually going to turn off my trace for a second, um, that our topography here, we are just set currently um, this is based off our home story. We can set this to like a sea level. We can see where this is. This is actually in uh, back in feet right now. Uh, we can set this to altitude. So that's from our zero to current stories from zero. So we will just uh, do all of this from our home story here uh, based off zero. Um, okay, so with that, let's uh, draw in some, some contour lines. So I'm just going to kind of go through here and we can get as detailed or as simple as we want, but I'm just going to kind of click through a few of these here. Um, so we'll, we'll add these in, we'll kind of just make up a random slope. Okay, and I want to, I want to differentiate between using the polyline and also using the spline tool. Now, I've noticed recently that using the spline tool, I think they've actually improved some of this functionality when um, actually creating contours in a mesh. It used to create like a million little points of interest, which would create a way more triangle faces than needed. But I think they've actually kind of rebuilt how this uh, gets applied. And so now it's not nearly as heavy as it used to be, which is which is really great. So, okay. So that's probably plenty. Um, so next step here is with our mesh selected, we can actually go through and just start clicking these and we wanna create points in our mesh built directly from these points of interest that we've set up here. So it looks like with the, uh, the spline tool now, it probably adds an intermediate point uh, between every single click that you create. Uh, so in the past, it used to create just a million of them, and there'd be some areas where it adds like just a ton of them. So, um, okay, so with this, I think we are good. Let's uh, select this in 3D real quick. And so there we can see we just have a flat mesh. And with that, let's go through and we can set some elevations here. So we're going to click our first line and we're just going to do these at one foot increments. And if we click apply to all, it's just going to apply to all the points on that specific line there. So you can actually see how it created um, these uh, triangles going up to the next level. So we can click on this one, we'll go to two, click here, we'll go to three, click here, four, and so on five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we can do this last one here. So this one, I would want to be careful not to do apply to all because if we did that, it would apply to all four corners. So I want to leave that there. And let's go ahead and see how this looks in 3d now so okay we have a nice kind of consistent uh flow here <clears throat> because we didn't input any values on the corners it's just set to our kind of our, our default elevation from from where we started with so something like this i would just try to kind of continue up at the same slope or in this case because we're halfway between this point and this point here then we just want to try to get that somewhere close. Okay, we can do the same thing down on this end as well. So that's how you create a sloping mesh here using, let's delete all these, um, yeah, using these polylines. So we can see as we pull this down, we can get some nice clean sloping out of this. And I used to recommend, or I used to always use just the polyline because 
it was not creating as many uh, triangles in the actual mesh. Um, sometimes using the spline, it just got really, really heavy. But now you can see that you can almost barely even tell between how many uh, triangles are being created from our polyline versus our, our spline. So um, really at this point, I don't think there's a downside to using splines in this case. So, okay, with that, we now have this set up. And um, yeah, in the next video here, we're actually going to go through and be creating a, a 3D boundary for our site using a morph uh, so that we can see our uh, property lines in both 2D, 3D, in section and in elevation. So uh, yeah, that's the next video coming up here. If you have any questions on this, uh, leave it in the comment section. There's also, um, I just wanna point out, there's also some other methods for creating meshes. Uh, we won't really cover those as part of this series, but I'll come back and do some follow-up videos on those different methods. We can use XYZ coordinates, um, either from Archicad, or from an external source. And we can also use unflattened 3D DWGs that you may often get from, say, your civil engineer or whoever's doing a, a survey of the site. So that's another method where we can import those and we can actually create a point list from a 3D DWG. But we'll talk about that here in some follow-up videos. Thanks for watching, and uh, we will catch you on the next video coming up on our 3D boundary.